Cumulatively, the idea is to change the nature of the, of the human form from a biological uh, entity into a synthetic biological entity, which is why synthetic biology is now an exploding discipline within science. And in my books over decades, I've uh, exposed this uh, agenda I said was coming of changing the human body uh, into a form that not only is completely different in its genetic makeup to the, to the human form uh, we know, but the plan is, as this moves on, and if you know where it's meant to go, you can see the stepping stones to it. It's what I call know, know the outcome and you'll see the journey. And as it moves on, you're moving to a point eventually where uh, they don't want a human that can actually procreate. So therefore, men and women, the genders of men and women, uh, have become superfluous. And, it, and if you want a, 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 an example of the kind of world that I'm talking about, then just read Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. It came out in 1932. And Huxley and uh, Orwell, with his 1984 and 1948, um, they weren't coming uh, from totally from their imagination. These were very well connected people uh, within the system who um, had access to what this plan was. And uh, therefore, they've been so accurate uh, in terms of Orwell, the police state and the surveillance, etc. And uh, Huxley in terms of the, the drugs, the genetic manipulation. And Huxley uh, talked about the time when we'd have the end of parents uh, because there'd be no procreation. And children, um, in his words, would be decanted in world stage hatcheries technologically. And if people will only just look around, uh, artificial wombs are already being produced to allow this to happen. I've written a, a stream of, of books and very detailed books over the last 30 years uh, that have covered so many different subjects, um, both happening now and from history. And every single one of them connect. It's a massive web and it's not new. Uh, what's new is the level to which it has now reached. It's um, a process of constantly centralizing power. So fewer and fewer and fewer people are making decisions and imposing their will on more and more and more people. So we started out, humans were um, organized in tribes and the uh, people in the tribe decided what the tribe was going to do. And then there came a pivotal moment when lots of tribes were brought together under what became known as nations. And now a few people at the center of the nation are dictating to all the, all the former tribes. And then in, in Europe, um, the nations uh, have been um, brought together under uh, a central bureaucratic dictatorship, the European Union. And now a tiny few unelected people at the center in Brussels are dictating to all the, all the uh, former countries, because they are former in terms of power, and uh, all the former tribes that all those countries are made up of. And uh, globalization is simply the process of centralizing power in every area of our lives. So the question, why are they doing it? And what's behind it? Well, I've... Um, I've been exposing for all these decades a, a cult, I call it the global cult. It's a network of secret societies, semi-secret groups and organizations this cult controls within the, within the world of the scene. Governments, government agencies, corporations, media, um, uh, Silicon Valley, etc. Uh, and uh, this uh, cult um, operates like a transnational corporation. You have what I call the spider at the center, like the headquarters of a transnational corporation. And then in each country, there's a sub-network. Their job is to impose the will of the spider, the center, the headquarters, in their sphere of influence in their country. So then we go to the spider. What is the spider? Well, the spider uh, on the human world of the scene level is the inner core of this cult. And they um, would make psychopaths look like uh, Mary Poppins. But it goes deeper than that. And, and this starts to 
come into the real reason, uh, I suggest, behind the whole AI agenda to connect AI to the human brain and the, the changing of, of humans from uh, a uh, biological to a synthetic biological state is all part of this takeover by AI. You've got Silicon Valley crazies, because they are, who are now uh, openly talking about uh, 2030 as a time when the uh, human uh, brain starts to be connected to, um, to artificial intelligence, so artificial intelligence becomes the human mind. You have this agenda for AI being connected to humans and taking humans over and AI running the whole system of the, this, what's known as the smart grid, all this, all this technology connected to the internet and run by AI, your car, your fridge, everything. So what's behind it? Well, if you go outside of our reality to the world of the unseen and uh, people say, what do you mean world of the unseen? You say there's some force behind this cult, yeah? Well, where are they then? And then you say, well, you know, when you look through your eyes, can you see everything that exists in the space you're looking at? And they'll go, yeah, of course you can, most people do. No, you can't. What we call the world of the scene is actually a tiny band of frequency. According to mainstream science, the electromagnetic spectrum is 0.005% of what exists in the universe in terms of uh, energy, mass, all that stuff, matter. Uh, 0.005%. And what we call visible light, which is the only band of frequency that we can see, is a, a smear of the 0.005%. And that is the extent of the visual world of humans. And we are not seeing a world, we are seeing a band of frequency which our body systems and our senses can decode into a visual interactive reality and beyond that beyond that band of frequency is infinity and we're tuned to this visual reality we call visible light but beyond it and in the case of the uh, the force that's really behind this just beyond it is a, um, a non-human force, consciousness, which is described in ancient legends and uh, accounts all over the world. I don't care what the culture is or what the background is, you'll find this same recurring theme. And the different cultures and different religions, ways of seeing the world, uh, call this force under different names, but they're describing the same force. So. Christians call this force demons. Muslims call this force jinn. The Gnostic uh, belief system goes way back. Call them archons, which is a, a Greek word meaning rulers. In uh, the Zulu, the peoples of South Africa, they call them Chittahuri, children of the serpent or the, the devastators is another uh, name they have for them. And they're all describing the same thing. It's a force that's manipulating humanity from the unseen. And this, this network, this global cult, is the vehicle within visible light for that force to impose its will. And what it's um, seeking to do is uh, literally assimilate humanity into itself. And... Uh, you know, you, you see the, the sci-fi movies and the dystopian movies where, where this theme um, keeps repeating, but that's what it's trying to do. Th this consciousness, this archontic consciousness, which is expressed through this cult, is deeply distorted, deeply chaotic, and basically is an inversion of life. It's an inversion of balance. It's an inversion of compassion, empathy. And what is psychopathy except an inversion of all those things? And because it's an inversion of consciousness, and if you look at the word live in English, it's evil written backwards. And this cult is an inversion of life itself. And so you look at human society and it's an inversion. Everything's upside down. Everything's back to front from the way it should be if you want to run a, 
caring, decent, fair, and just society. It's all inverted because it's an expression of this consciousness. The thing about love is that it's the ultimate strength, the love in its true sense, I mean, unconditional love. It's the ultimate strength because it, was, it is without that which takes our strength away, fear. This, what we call love in its true sense, will always do what it knows to be right. Not when there's an R in the month, every time. And it, it won't um, let fear stop it doing what it knows to be right because when you're coming from this level of awareness, you know that you're a, an infinite expression of forever and, and, and this is just a brief experience called human. So consequences, woof, I'm going to do what I know to be right. But you will always do what you know to be right and, and, um, and not let consequences get in the way of that. Uh, so just because you're told to do something which you know is there to take your freedom away doesn't mean you're going to do it. In fact, that will never do that. And this is the, uh, the level of, uh, of awareness, I think, that, that, that is, is, is necessary because it's, it's operating beyond the nonsense and the, the, the juvenile um, ludicrousness that goes on within human society. Um, and um, it goes beyond that level of perception that is controlled by this cult, which is basically the five senses. That's, that's the kind of arena that they operate on. And that's where they manipulate the, the senses, the emotions, thoughts. But they can't manipulate love because it's on a level of frequency that's beyond anything they can touch. So when you enter those states, you go beyond their ability to impact upon you.